Franklin, Tennessee. The name will haunt me for the rest of my days. A federal soldier described the battle. Another one said, the devil took full possession of the earth. Another soldier said that the elements of hell turned loose would be like a Methodist love feast compared to the pandemonium that reigned here. When you talk about the Lotz House, I think it's important to start with the man who builds the Lotz House. Uh, Johann Albert Lotz is his name. He will be born in Germany, Saxony. We know that his mother will die at childbirth. It had to affect him growing up. Uh, he will leave home at 19 and he will go to work in the European Guild system. Uh, basically what that means, he starts off his professional career first as an apprentice. He will be promoted to journeyman and after 20 years of work and study, Johann Albert Lotz will actually earn the designation Master Woodworker, Master Cabinet Maker. Once he receives that very important designation over in Europe, both Johann and his wife Margarita, they will come to the States basically to capitalize or make good on that 20-year college education. The couple will get to Franklin in 1854. Uh, one year later, he'll purchase this property. He will begin to build this home. It takes him three years to do it. He will not have slaves. He will not have slave labor. He'll build this house by himself, and this will be his show house. Uh, this will be a model house. For example, as you walk through the house today, you'll see that there are wonderful cornices above the downstairs windows and doors. Uh, very strange and unusual for the day, but those are examples of what he can do. All of the crown molding in the house is his, and then he is a wonderful maker of musical instruments. Everything from guitars, fiddles, banjos, he also makes wonderful grand pianos. And as you walk in the front door of the home today, you'll look up and you will see a beautiful black walnut wraparound staircase. And the newel post is actually the leg of one of his pianos that he will invert. He'll use that big heavy leg to stabilize the black walnut wraparound staircase. All of the spindles will be hand carved or hand turned by him in a little woodworking shop he has out behind the back of the home. There will be three small children in the home when the battle takes place. The oldest son, Paul, he's just nine. Uh, the little girl in the family, her name is Matilda. She will uh, celebrate her sixth birthday the day before the battle. And the baby of the family, he's Augustus. He's only two. This family will celebrate Matilda's, they call her Tilly for short, kind of a nickname. They'll celebrate her sixth birthday, the day before the battle, with a little sugar cake. And that night on November 29, 1864, this family, along with everyone else in Franklin, about a thousand people or so at the time, they'll all go to sleep. And, and, and none of these people have a clue, an inkling of an idea what's coming, what will befall them in less than 24 hours. This town will be awakened early on the morning of the 30th, November 30th, 1864, with literally 20 to 22,000 federal soldiers, horses, there's wagons, there's cannons, there's mules, a seven mile long wagon train of supply wagons. They're all coming down Columbia Pike. That's the road that runs in front of the house today. And they're on their way to Nashville. Late in the morning of the 30th, between 1015, 1045, the Federal Army will knock on Mr. Lote's front door and they will inform him, uh, I say facetiously, that they're going to do a little yard work for him that day. In all actuality, in all seriousness, what that means is they will go out back behind his home, they will tear down his barn, his stable, his outhouse, his smokehouse, his detached kitchen, they will level his very important woodworking shop. They'll take all the wood out of it, they'll cut down every ornamental tree on his property, and he has finished his acreage with a wonderful plank fence. They will mow that fence down. They'll take all that wood, that building material, that lumber to help fortify and strengthen the breastworks. And then it's time for the Federal Army to eat. Just north of the home today, they'll start to slaughter his cows, his hogs, his sheep, and his chickens. And I like to tell everybody, this is a wooden plank clapboard house. It's a totally wood structure. Today, 
when the cars drive by, all those loud trucks and motorcycles, you can hear it on the inside of the house. When the wind blows, when the bird sings and you're inside, you can hear that as well. There's not a doubt in my mind that this family of five huddled in this structure can clearly hear all the commotion that day that surrounds their home. And I encourage everybody, if they can, to take a step back and put themselves in the place of Mr. and Mrs. Lotes, those two parents. It was this family that just 18 months ago, or 18 months earlier, buried two babies, courtesy of the Federal Army. It's safe to say that at this point in time, this family has to be filled with nothing but just sheer terror. Late in the day, Lotes will make the decision, they've got to leave. He will pick up his baby with one arm, his toolbox in the other hand. His wife will take Matilda's little hand. Little Paul will follow in behind. They will walk out their front doors. They'll walk through all these federal troops and they will go 110 steps across the street to the Carter House because the Carter House is made of brick. They have a big brick basement. And if there's a hope of surviving the storm that's coming, there's a better chance across the street than here. The Lotz family had been advised by the Federal Army officers not to leave. They felt there'd be very little chance of a frontal assault of almost two miles of open field. And they told the Carter family that if you leave, we cannot guarantee you the contents of the home. I'm sure they told the Lotz family that. So very little chance of getting, attacking three lines of entrenchments. Uh, wrong in this case. And we guess, estimate, around 3 p.m. on November 30th, the family had no other choice. Just a wooden structure, couldn't go north, couldn't go southeast, west. I had only one choice, 125 paces to the basement of the Carter House. And when the battle was in full-blown horror, uh, what in the basement, and with the Lotz family, every minute is an hour. Uh, they're just about 50 yards from them. There's a four-gun battery, 20th Ohio battery, are, are firing um, uh, against the main line where the Confederates are 60 yards south and every volley, lumber, timber, debris, burnt, dirt, body parts just flying all over creation. Horses screaming, men screaming. Uh, uh, it is just, you never, you don't know when your next second is your last. And here are children more than a dozen children down there that are hearing this carnage. And uh, so something around 4.30 in the afternoon, 4, 4 15, they're in the basement and they're gonna be in the basement until two, uh, three o'clock in the morning. And uh, the heavy fighting went on uh, until 9.30 that night, but skirmishing after that, and you think you'd be safe by 1.30, but then General Hood, Confederate Army, brought up a hundred cannons, artillery pieces, and they're gonna fire a hundred rounds each of the city. And uh, they fired three or four rounds, realized the enemy was gone, but they had to endure that as well. And you you move, you step out of the house the next morning, and bodies are everywhere. And uh, you couldn't walk on the ground hardly, you had to walk around the bodies. And there's a federal drummer boy in the middle of the road, uh, I don't know his age, but killed, still laying there looking to heaven. Uh, w. W. Exum from Memphis, Tennessee, an Irish immigrant, 5th Confederate, banned to death numerous times. Uh, bodies were literally standing up dead because they couldn't fall down. They weren't any place to fall. Uh, like Colonel Stafford, FSS Stafford, 31st Tennessee, who took over command of General Straw, he, there's nowhere to fall. He was standing up dead, frozen in death, bodies up to his waist. And that's the carnage uh, that, that the family, the Lotz family, had to endure the sounds, once again, of horses screaming, men screaming, gunfire. Uh, art, an artillery piece, a 12-pound Napoleon, uh, at reenactments, they're firing a half a pound of gunpowder. In battle, they're firing 2.2 pounds of gunpowder. Two other guns were brought up with them, and fire, so that's six guns firing within 50 yards of the house, uh, much less firing out of the windows of the home while the family is hiding in the basement. And uh, it, uh, what a way to start your first day of, of six years old, little Matilda Lopes.